Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 283. This is your host, Holly Wharton, back with another co-hosted episode with the fabulous Joanna Hennen. Today we are going to talk about how to balance the inner work and the outer work, the spiritual and the practical. We found that we often get caught up in the energy and mindset work and we forget about the practical action taking. Or we do the practical action taking, but it's not quite aligned. So in this episode, we're going to look at the imbalance that sometimes occurs and why we often swing like a pendulum from one side to the other before finding our happy medium that works for us. We discuss why it's not about focusing on one thing or the other, and why you have to integrate the spiritual and the practical, and we talk about how to do that. It's all about combining the being and the doing, and we share practical tips on how you can make this happen. So today's episode is kind of an exploration of what's going on for us, what we've seen in clients, and what you can do instead. So, what you'll learn today. We're going to talk about the relationship between energy work and physical reality, and why we need to be present here in physical reality. We explore why we sometimes have unwillingness to do something in physical reality and how to overcome that. We talk about why sometimes we want the inner work to be enough, and yet we have to do the outer work too. We also discuss why we end up trapped in the energy side of things, And we forget that we have to do the physical things as well. And I say forget with air quotes. We also explore why we sometimes use energy work to avoid looking at our physical reality. Finally, we look at why we need to make the spiritual practical and how to do that. So this isn't just philosophizing on the inner versus outer work. It is also giving you some practical tips. So I hope you find this episode interesting and useful. We decide to talk about this because we think not enough people are talking about this. You know, it's something that I know the two of us have both discussed before, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about my magical spiral staircase with the one-step practical action and the one-step inner work, mindset work. But we need to be talking about this more because I think a lot of people have the tendency to kind of swing one way or the other, either focusing on the hustle or focusing on the inner work. So Without further ado, here is the episode. Hey, Joanna. Hi, Holly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. I'm really looking forward to our topic today. Yes, I'm going to have an opportunity to vent a lot of anger. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we're laughing about how we're going to be uh, ranting about things. <laughs> so today is a topic that I think we both touched on more than once, but we feel the need to drive home in this episode about how we all exist in physical reality. Most of us listening to this, <laughs> so I'm sure there's some non-physical beings <laughs> mm. listening to the podcast as well. <laughs> but for the majority of us humans who are listening to this, we live in physical reality, but sometimes we kind of forget that. We do. We do. And I think we ignore that a little bit. So this episode is this whole conversation is going to be a reminder that life and your success and everything else is not just about energy. There's another component that Holly and I feel it's easy to kind of brush away somehow and not really look at. And of course, that component is the physical (laughs) and the logical and all the non-energy stuff. Yeah, I think that's why, like, when I do my heart-centered energy work with clients, so often we end up working on the lower chakras, the first, the second, the third, because I think the people I tend to work with are very advanced in the higher chakras and not so much in the grounded base stuff. 
Mm. So that's what they need. That's what's blocked. That's what needs to be kind of focused on because we're so good at doing the spiritual stuff. Like we're good at the personal development. We're good at the energy work. We're good with the higher stuff. Because the higher stuff is easy. For those people, like those of us who kind of have those tendencies, it's much easier. And I think like, I think like I found it really hard to be in the physical for many years. I much, even now, like I forget about physical stuff. Like I forget to eat or, you know, this is like part of the reason why I'm overweight is that I don't pay attention to that stuff. And then I exist on cereal bars. I just forget, like I forget to eat when my husband's not at home. In the evening, I forget to eat, and then it's 10 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> you mm. know? Like, and then you don't want to cook, and so you no, just grab something. it's too something. late to cook. Yeah, so something packaged comes out. And it's just because, like, I'm more comfortable in the kind of hanging out in the in the soul, at the soul level with my spirit buddies. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really weird, but it's true. <laughs> like, it's just much easier to hang out in my head and, like, create and yeah think and dream up and connect and visualize and all that than it is to be really fully grounded in a world that's not perfect right it's not an Mm. ideal world there's lots of really crappy things here so it's just kind of easier to not be here sometimes yeah yeah it is because you can exist in your little fantasy world and I feel like that's something that I really tried to drive home for all the years that I was focusing on mindset work was that you have to do the mindset work and take the practical action. Do the mindset work, take the practical action. I always used to say that it's like going up a spiral staircase where one step is the practical action, one step is the mindset work, but you absolutely have to do both. Otherwise, you're not going to see the results that you want. And yet I know I myself sometimes have been kind of heavier on the mindset stuff because I love going within. I love doing the inner work. I like, I find it fascinating to pick apart my brain and figure out what my limiting beliefs are, my blocks are, and then turn them on their head. I love that stuff. Yeah. And that's easier. It's easier. I'm sorry, but like, yeah, in every like situation, in every reality, like it's going to be much easier to like write out your beliefs about visibility than it's going to be to like turn on the video camera and go live and like tell people something about yourself or like speak your truth or step into that energy of teacher and leader. Like, much nicer to sit there with your journal. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because oftentimes the actions that we need to take are outside of our comfort zone. So it's challenging. Yeah. And so we started talking about this because all that whole kind of online spiritual space has become, it's not exactly anti-action. I know that. I know a lot of people kind of talk about action, but like it makes us believe, it gives the impression that I don't know, like that all you need to do is the energy work and everything else will fall into place. And I don't think that that's entirely true. Like, I do believe that the energy is more important in the sense that there's no point taking the action until your energy is aligned. Hmm. So, so that for sure. And I always talk about how it's never about the action. It's more about the energy behind the action. So it doesn't really matter what action you take as your energy is aligned and then you pick something. (laughs) Yeah. And conversely, I have sometimes taken the right actions, but with the totally wrong energy. So yeah, exactly. And then it doesn't work. Right. So yeah. So in that sense, the energy piece is really important, but somehow we really tend to not take the action or to shy away from taking the action. And I have a really, really personal example, which is, you know, I was thinking today, like I'm doing a bunch of content for the soul space for this transition from 2018, 2019. And I was thinking, oh, I need to do something about like helping people choose their word for the year, right? Because we do these intuitive dream boards and whatever, whatever. So, okay, the way I teach in the soul space is a lot of illustration about how I use things. I was thinking, okay, my word for this year was reach a wider audience. Hmm. Now, I have spent a lot of time working on beliefs and doing my journaling and thinking about it and talking to Holly. (laughs) (laughs) But I haven't actually done anything. I have not pitched to a single podcast. Holly's cringing. Her face is like, what? (laughs) (laughs) Only because we've had that conversation multiple times. (laughs) Yeah, but this this is, you know, so maybe this isn't like, this doesn't put me in like the best light, but like, you guys, you can see I'm human too. Like, I also don't want to take the big uncomfortable action sometimes. But what does that mean? 
That yeah. means that I didn't accomplish the goals I wanted to accomplish this year. So what does that mean for next year? Are you going to continue to focus on that? Is that going to be your kind of word of the year that rolls over or is it going to shift at all? I haven't gone through my own end of the year uh, review as we record this in December. So I don't know yet. Yeah, I mean, I have some thoughts about the word of the year and what it actually is and mm. stuff like that, which we can maybe talk about another time. Yeah. But I just want to like illustrate that like I had intentions and... I had my energy work and all this stuff and it didn't happen. <laughs> what I wanted mm. didn't happen. And it didn't happen for the very simple reason that I didn't take the action. I didn't take the action in the physical space. So nobody knows that I want to reach lots of people. <laughs> <laughs> and new audiences specifically. And new audiences. Like expanding. Yeah. Yeah. So this really, really impacts stuff, right? And I, I just, yeah, I get very angry about kind of getting stuck in that world, that like fantasy world of just focusing on the energy and everything will be all right. Yeah, well, it's uh, like, it's like, we do so much work around believing, you know, the universe has my back and the universe will always provide for me. But it's like, we can't just sit and wait for it to do stuff. Yeah, I think I think that's the problem. Exactly. Is, is that we're kind of, it's implied through like all the messaging we get online when we're in these kind of spiritual business circles and spiritual circles, that that's the end of the story. Mm. That the energy stuff is the end of the story, but it's not. It's the beginning. It's the foundation. Mm. And that's that's kind of what I've come to realize. And a huge part of what I teach is that is that basis. In fact, like in the soul space, we don't talk about business. Like people join the soul space because they want to have a better business or have more success. But that's not what we actually work on because we work on the foundation, that energy foundation, right? And then the actual business stuff comes after or in parallel. Mm. But it's like a separate thing, mm -hmm. right? I feel very um, ranty about all the stuff that were that's kind of implied mm. in the messaging that we see. Yeah, I feel like it's not explicit enough. And I know that's a kind of a criticism that a lot of people have had of The Secret, the book and film, because it was very much about law of attraction, you know, focus on what you want, it will come, and not so much about practical action. It's like they're telling half the story. Yeah, exactly. And so it breathes just a lot of frustration. Because yeah. there are a lot of people like sitting around doing lots of visualizing <laughs> you know? and then like, you know, and then either forgetting about that particular goal altogether or mm -hmm. doing stuff that actually sabotages that particular goal. And so in the end, not really getting anywhere. Yeah. And I think it's important when we say practical action, we don't mean practical energy work or practical mindset work. It's not the visualizing. It's not the meditating. It's not doing your five by 55 affirmations. It's taking the action. It's if you want to lose weight, it's changing how you eat. It's changing how you exercise. If you want to reach a, a wider audience, it's pitching yourself to podcasts. Mm -hmm. It's approaching people. It's talking to new people. It's getting yourself yeah. out there. It's, it's doing different things in physical reality rather than the inner work. It's the outer work. Yes. And I think that the important kind of thing to notice in yourself and understand for yourself is where you have kind of convinced yourself or used this energy work stuff and the fact that the universe does work on energy and all that kind of stuff, because that's still truth. Like we're not negating that. But your life, have you used that as an excuse to not do anything? And weight loss is a great example, because Holly and I have talked about weight for a long time, like for men, yeah, for loads of, I mean, yeah. we have lo had loads of conversations. And now Holly found a system, a way of being that works yeah. for her. And she's been losing weight. Whereas I'm kind of like, I'm just going to do the belief work, but I still want my crisps. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, listeners, guess who's getting the better results. You know? <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, I don't, oh, this is a tricky topic because like I did years of mindset work on this. I mean, this was one of the top three topics that I've been working with myself on for the last five years. And I was taking practical action. I was trying all kinds of different ways of eating and exercise and stuff to see if that worked. And it, but it took many years of the inner work and the outer work to finally find the thing that worked for me. It's also tricky, too, because it, you need to try different things. You can't just say, oh, well, I tried the Tim Ferriss slow-carb diet and that didn't work, or I tried whatever. Like, I had to try a ton of stuff, like a ton of practical things before I found. And I had to do a ton of mindset work. But I wonder, I wonder, I would question yes. whether 
you really did need to try all those things or whether if you had just concentrated on the mindset and energy stuff, if you wouldn't have any way eventually just happened upon the thing that's right for you. And you could have maybe saved yourself a lot of years of frustration that nothing is working. Yeah. And if I had paid attention to, and I just did a solo podcast episode on this, which is going to come out the week before this one, paying attention to the signs in your life. So the thing that works for me in terms of weight loss is two things, keto, so high fat, low carb, and intermittent fasting. Both things I had been hearing about for years, and I was kind of drawn to them, but kind of not. And I cannot count to you the number of people that have said to me, either keto or the Bulletproof Diet, which is also high fat, low carb, but like over the last few years, that word keto has come up so many times, and I didn't take action on it. Fasting, I was always like mildly drawn to fasting, but I didn't think I was good at it because I used to get hangry carb crashes because I wasn't eating the right kinds of food, so it didn't work for me. And these things kept coming up over and over and over, and I wasn't paying attention to them. And it was like somehow, boom, it all came together and like culminated in this beautiful combination of what I'm doing now. Yeah. And if you had followed those signs earlier, then you could have had your results earlier as well. So there is this element of being willing to do kind of the uncomfortable things and look at the uncomfortable things. And yeah. And I mean, I'm not there yet with the weight stuff, although I will publicly say that, I mean, the signs that have been coming to me for years is like whole food living and vegan and those kinds of things. Maybe not completely, but like cutting out a lot of the animal stuff. Right. Mm. But that's hard and it's a pain. And you know, so I haven't really been doing it. Yeah. Well, and I would challenge you to say, maybe do some belief work on it and see if that makes it easier. Because anytime yeah. you feel like something is hard, like that's where maybe you can yeah. release some of the resistance through mindset work. I will. I will. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm getting a better handle on the relationship between energy and mm. the physical world. And yeah. I think like I've always been a super logical person, although I believed in the spiritual side of things and the energy side of things. But then like, When I found the online business space, I seem to have totally like become totally kind of unhinged (laughs) (laughs) in terms of my logical self and the physical world. And I kind of went into this space where I was just like, oh, well, this is much easier. (laughs) Like, I don't have to think about the the hard things in life and and the hard things in my business. And I'm just going to focus on the energy. And of course, that didn't work until I was willing to take the the action. And I get really upset about this because I just think a lot of people are getting stuck in this. You know, like I get a lot of people saying to me, you know, I've done the visualizations and I've done this energy work and I've had the belief upgrades and all this stuff and it's still not working. And my question is always, well, what are you doing? Like, what is your strategy? Yeah. Well, I wonder, as you were saying that, I wonder, because I used to be very, very logical and very atheist, like not even spiritual. And then I kind of like, it's like a pendulum. It like it swung the Mm. other way and I became super spiritual. And I wonder if this is just kind of the pendulum falling into that middle ground, because I went from like one extreme to the other and now I'm middle grounding it. So I wonder if maybe that's a path that a lot of us have to walk. We have to go from one Mm -hmm. thing to the other and then find that happy medium where we can both be spiritual and be grounded in physical reality. Yeah, I agree. Actually, the pendulum thing like totally resonates with me. And like, that's exactly how I feel. Like I'm finally like finding the balance and understanding the action piece and the physical piece, right? But still, I'm not sure that you need to, if you're on this path, like I'm not sure you need to swing that far basically, right? I don't think, because that's where the frustration is going to be, like, because you think that you're doing all the right things. Yeah. And yet nothing's going and nothing's working. And at the end of the day, it it has to be a balance. You have to do your energy stuff so that you're taking the action from the right energy. But you also have to be doing things and consistently and like all that physical stuff is still really important. And when you're running a business, for example, like, that's really important. Like the marketing piece is really important. Like Holly and I talked about business for, you know, many times. And out of those conversations, I did things like decide not to do anything. Like, like, so what would happen if like I never made any offers? And well, guess what happened? (laughs) I never made any money. (laughs) It was a good experiment, though. (laughs) It was. I think it was a very good experiment. And I'm I'm very grateful that I was able to take that loss and do that experiment. (laughs) 
but because it's really interesting like so you have to experiment for for yourself and see like where that line is and you'll mm. see for yourself like how much energy work you need to do and then how much action you need to take and and to really keep moving like mm. i think it's a good habit to be in to do something towards your goal every day because it keeps it top of mind and you know that success will be built from those little things you 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 are willing to do on a regular basis right absolutely and you know i spent the better part of this year feeling really bad about myself for not doing bigger and brighter things with my business but that was because i was moving more towards my writing and i was moving towards my nature stuff and moving towards a huge shift and it wasn't until i've been doing massive amounts of like year end reviewing ever since sawan but i looked at my primary goals some of which are kind of wrapping up kind of in the next between now and the end of the year and i realized none of them were business based they were all like nature based and physical based and that kind of thing and the only reason i'm about to kind of achieve all of those goals between now and the end of the year is because i have looked at them all throughout the year my walk a thousand miles challenge i have a spreadsheet that i update every time i go on a walk and i have the spreadsheet that tracks how many miles have i walked how many miles do i have to go how many miles do i have to do this week to stay on track and i've been monitoring those and that's the only way i achieving that particular goal because i'm taking action based on this thing that i'm monitoring. Okay, those are goals that require your effort. So there's something to track, right? What about things like money goals, right? Money goals are a little bit different because i don't want to say we don't have control over it because obviously i'm a big believer in creating reality with intention but it's a little bit different and i know from from my experience i actually really hate tracking money on days that nothing comes in there's like nothing that will make me feel any better <laughs> you know if i have to like if i have a tracker and all i see is zeros mm. yeah there's some goals that depend entirely on you and there's some goals that depend on you and other parties so that does make it more complex. So things like money goals are in fact they're kind of not linked to physical reality almost. Mm. And I think like that obsession almost with our money stuff and with tracking our income and I mean we need to track money but it's not what I'm yeah. saying but with kind of that energy of money piece I don't think it's good for us to be honest because we're not tracking things that we can actually do. We're tracking things that yeah. we don't have that much control over in the end or that require certain actions. So like right. you can be tracking money or wanting to track income, but then like not putting out any offers like mm. I was doing. So, <laughs> you know, in my yeah. little experiment. So yeah. it kind of like all that considering things as energy is great. And obviously, like it's still the way things are like we're not going to argue that. But just focusing on that really i feel takes us out of the physical space and acts as kind of like a justification or an excuse to bury our heads in the sand about some real like real stuff hmm. in our businesses in our money situations in our weight situation like it kind of gives us permission to not look at the reality almost yeah cuz it's kind of a nebulous kind of goal or project yeah so you may have heard me talking about my money stuff recently like i signed up for a, a year of working on money stuff from a very practical point of view so i'm learning about investing and like you know the stock market and property and all these things that i never yeah i just never knew anything about and i'm kind of kicking myself the whole time because i'm thinking like i really should have like taken charge of this earlier instead of like sitting there and being too scared to look at it because it's difficult money stuff is difficult just like weight stuff is difficult mm -hmm. and a lot of success stuff is difficult like it just brings up a lot and so for years like i wasn't actually willing to look at my spending mm -hmm. because i made it mean a whole load of things that were connected to past stuff, you know, and I just wasn't willing to do it and it makes me a little bit, I don't know, just just a little bit like angry and and frustrated that I bought into a way of looking at things that wasn't the whole picture. Mm. And I'm not blaming anyone for this. This was totally like my comfort. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that ruled those decisions. Yeah. And yet there's something wrong with not showing the full picture and not talking about all the things that go into success and all the things that go into reality creation. Hmm. Yeah, it's almost like two people need to partner up, like the inner person and the outer person and kind of like work together. 
Yeah, I don't know anybody who did it, to, who did just one side of it, hmm. basically. I mean, I think you can probably, like, you can probably be really successful and not do the energy stuff, but then it's hard and it's a struggle and mm. you're, like, and you're pushing all the time. You're, you're pushing you're hustling. All. Yeah. But is it possible to experience success without ever doing anything? Do we know any examples, Holly? No, I don't. And, and like, we talk about this all the time, like, theoretically, perhaps there is someone so enlightened that they can create success in their lives through the inner work alone. Like theoretically that should be possible, but mm. I can't think of any examples. Like no, everyone's always done something. It was like when we were chatting before the call, you said like Eckhart Tolle, he, like he had to write a book. Yeah. He was like the most enlightened person I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are others. I do yeah, that. no, but I mean like all the people like that, they all had to either write a book or get out there or be seen. Or, buy a, or at least buy a lottery ticket. Like there's still yeah. an action involved yeah. or an, a lottery ticket could be an investment, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure we have anything like to share in terms of solutions to this, but it's just kind of an appeal for yourself as what to think about as you move into the next chapter of your life to really think about whether you're kind of doing too much energy work and not mm. enough of the action because it's really easy to just stay at home and journal all day. Mm. It's nice. Yeah, it's it's I love doing that stuff. So like maybe one practical action that people could do is look at the stuff you've been journaling about, look at the stuff you've been doing the inner work on and see, ask yourself, what is one practical action step I could take that would move me closer to actually experiencing this in my life? Yeah. And like, then do it. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then do it. <laughs> but like, look at the themes, like what have you been working on in the inner stuff? And I was very lucky when I did my psych K training, had one of my instructors was really into the action plan to the point where he said, if I'm working with a client and they haven't done their action plan, I will postpone their session. I will not see them again until they've completed it. And that really kind of drove it home for me. So, you know, I got into the habit of at the end of every session, creating the action plan with the client because you need to take practical action. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just go off and do your thing. Like I would sit with them and do the plan <laughs> with them to make sure that they had very clear action steps. Yes, Holly, I remember. Yes. <laughs> I remember you being quite pushy about <laughs> me, like identifying the action. <laughs> Yes, yes. I ask the question always, like when I work with people on that energy level, um, I always ask the question about what the next action step would be. But to be honest, most people don't answer that question. And I have to wonder, like, I would hope that they answer it for themselves and then go off and do that thing. Mm -hmm. But I suspect that they don't. And then it's very easy to fall into frustration and say, you know, I've done all these things and I've paid for all this energy work and I've done all this energy work myself. And I, and then yet nothing happened. Ask yourself why? Like if you're in that situation and you're listening to this, there's an area in your life where you're thinking it's not happening. There are only two answers as to why, right? It's either that the energy is misaligned. So you haven't been doing any energy work and just trying to push through. Or you got stuck in doing the energy work and haven't done any action. Yeah. So again, the pendulum being on the extremes, like too much this way or too much that way. Yeah. Rather than having that balance. So do you think, would you say that a lot of us are using this spiritual stuff, like the energy work, the mindset work as a justification for not doing the stuff we find difficult? Because it can be so easy to like do all the mindset work, do all the energy work and be like, okay, I like, I took the action. I did so much. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Like my weight stuff is a great example of that. We've done loads of belief statements, haven't we, Holly? Yeah. On like, on it being easy to lose weight and like on the beliefs surrounding, I don't need to do anything. It'll just come. And even with those beliefs, <laughs> it's not quite happening. <laughs> mm. And yeah, I think I, I've used it for years, you know, and kind of because I don't want to make the choices, the hard choices, and I don't want to feel certain things. And there's just a whole bunch of kind of stuff in that. So yeah, so, so for sure, I've been using that as justification. And with money as well, I have to say, like, I have a very, very, let's say, colorful financial past <laughs> with a lot of mistakes. Yeah. So when I discovered this world that told me that all I needed to do was like, feel abundant and visualize, I embraced it wholeheartedly, because Absolutely. I didn't have to look at spending. And I didn't have to look at spending as bad and I didn't have to have a budget and 
like all these things. And although I appreciate that I had to do some of that energy work as well, like that was an, also an important piece for me, I definitely used it as an excuse kind of not to look at the practical side and not to learn about money and not to learn about things at the end of the day, not that hard. Hmm how money works and balance sheets and income statements. These things aren't difficult, but you have to actually sit down and do it. And reading another book about the energy of money was always more appealing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Clear so, your yeah. money blocks, change your mindset. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I've and done a ton all... of that. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's not important. Because no. like, I think yeah. that's really, I mean, in this conversation, it's just, we have to make that point. Neither Holly nor I think that the, obviously at the energy or mindset stuff doesn't need to be done, but it needs to be followed up. And I think the best way to phrase it was what we said at the beginning of this conversation is that that's not the last step, right? Mm. It's not the end of the process. Yeah. It's the beginning of the process. What you're doing with the energy sets the foundation and then you need to put a plan into action. So yes, you do need a marketing strategy. Yes, you do need like to talk to a financial advisor. Like, yes, you do need to know how to create assets. You know, you do need to know how your body works and what makes you gain weight, what makes you lose weight and the relationship between calories and exercise. I don't know, like all those things you do need to know. Yeah. Yeah. You need to educate yourself. Yeah. On and the I practical stuff. On the practical stuff. And a lot of people don't want to do that or find it boring or whatever. And I think that's where we get ourselves into trouble because there's just too many people sitting at home thinking, you know, I want to run a fulfilling business, but I don't want to learn about marketing. Mm. Well, sorry, <laughs> okay, you're going to be the best kept secret, right? So what's the solution then? So people who are really resisting this stuff, they're really resisting making lifestyle changes. They're really resisting doing the practical money stuff. They're really resisting marketing their business. Like what should they do? Like what? Energy work. <laughs> I know, but like we're assuming they've done all the energy work. I mean, obviously well, they no, haven't done all no. the energy work because they're not, they're still resisting. But like, at yeah. what point do you say, like, I'm scared of doing this thing, but I have to take the action. Like, how do people know when's, you know? My goodness, that's like the most difficult question anybody's I ever know. asked me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're live and recording. No, if you want, I can answer it first and then you can okay. Okay, build on that. So to me, it's like taking baby steps. So like, instead of taking the big, gigantic, huge step, like see how you could break that down into something smaller or see how you could do something smaller or easier or something. Because I think the more you get used to taking little steps that will build up to taking the bigger, scarier steps. Mm. I can see that with my money stuff for sure. Like I'm doing this program with a couple of friends and we have a pact to kind of do something small every day. We have our little WhatsApp group where we're checking in all the time on our small steps and it is, it is helping. We're really moving forward with things that we think are pretty much impossible to move forward on. So it really does work. The baby step approach. I would say that the answer to, to your question is that you need to be really conscious that you're making a choice. For me, it always boils down to that because I don't really care which choice you make, right? So I don't think it's actually about going bigger or building something better or earning more money or any of those things. And if you choose not to, that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like I always ask my soul spacers, like, what energy are you aligning with? And what would that, that version of you who's at reality you want to experience? What do they do, right? And then if you're not doing that, then you know that you're not choosing to for that reality, mm. right? It's the same as people who say, oh, I wish I could be a writer, but mm. they won't write. Yeah, exactly. Got right? to That's, do it. Oh, this also applies to me. Apparently I have some things to work through. <laughs> But that's what it is. I mean, I think the writing example is a great example because it's super clear. There are loads of people who say, I wish, right, that I could I could live the, the life of a writer. Yeah. But the actual sitting down in front of a screen every day and writing is not a choice that they or we are making. Yeah. And so we can't then experience the reality we say we want. So it's just like, for me, it's an awareness of like the stuff that you're saying you want. Mm. Are you actually making that a priority and taking the action you need to take to? Yeah. Are you choosing? Yeah. Right? And, you choosing and I think what's important is that everything is a choice. So you're either choosing for that or not choosing for it. And inaction is 
choosing to take in action. Like you're maybe not making a conscious decision, but you're making the decision to not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will also say, cause I don't want this episode to like make anybody feel bad when there's no need. Cause there is also an element of timing, right? Yeah. So you will like, Holly found the best solution for weight loss after several years of wanting to experience this, right? Like I have found a solution to help me with my money stuff after years and years of wanting to experience this. So there's an element of timing as well. So it's okay. Like if you're not quite ready to take the action, that's yeah. also okay. Right. So yeah. that just means you need to align more. You need to do more of the energy stuff or take some smaller steps rather mm. than kind of jumping into something big. So there is an element of that. It's not to say that you need to be kind of moving on all your stuff right this second. Yeah, exactly. And there are, yeah. there are times in your life when you're going to be focusing on some things and times when you're going to be focusing on other things. So it's not like you have to be like advancing on all the fronts of all of your goals in all areas of your life every yeah. single day. Yeah, but it's just like, I think what I would like listeners to take from this is like that willingness to look at whether mm. in any area they have kind of stopped with the energy piece, yeah. right? Where in your life have you made that kind of the end of the process? And I can pretty much guarantee that those will be the areas that you're most frustrated with in terms of not seeing the results you want or not being far enough on the journey or whatever it is. Absolutely. Right. So yeah. if you think like that, you've done the energy stuff and you're asking, why isn't it happening? Then look at strategy and what you're actually putting in place physically. Yeah. Or I've been trying to manifest this thing, but it's not, yeah. it's not happening. Yeah, exactly. What are you not doing? Yeah. And what, that element what could of you doing? do differently? Yeah. So there's an element of being, yes. Mm -hmm. And there's an element of doing. And the doing, I think, has gotten a bad rap, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, because there is, there's a significant portion of the online world that's really into the hustle. So it's like, yes. again, you've got the two extremes. You've got the hustle extreme and you've got the manifesting extreme. I don't know, like the spiritual. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's true. And it's the answer is somewhere in the middle. And that middle for me will be different to the middle for you and different to the middle for someone else. But you have to kind of play with that, right? And see what that balance is for you and how much action you do need to take. I think like, I do believe that if your energy is really aligned and you've done all that energy stuff, the found, you have that foundation then I do think that one action could produce like miraculous results. Mm. I do believe that for sure. Like it doesn't mean that you have to like, you know, work hard after you do the energy stuff, but you have to find your own balance to see what kind of percentage of energy work and what percentage of action you need to produce the results you want. I think that's it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I find this really, really interesting. Like I'm thinking through this myself as we talk. So this is, we're not really presenting like already thought through <laughs> presentation thing here, but it's so interesting to talk through it and really, yeah, with the examples from our own experience as well. Yeah. And I hope that it helps someone. Yeah. So is there anything else that we wanted to address here, Holly? No, I think we've got it. I think we've said it over and over and over again in the last 40 minutes, but it's about finding that balance between the inner work, the outer work, the spiritual, the practical, and how that balance is going to be different for everyone. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And really being conscious, mm -hmm. being really honest yes. with yourself about where you're using the energy stuff as an excuse, as an excuse, as justification, and where are you burying your head in the sand? Yeah. But that will relate, like I'm talking about it from the perspective of money mostly, because that's kind of what I'm focusing on at the moment is learning about that. And I'm realizing mm -hmm. how many things I could have put in place earlier with not much effort. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So I just hope that this conversation will help. We'll kind of shorten the timeline for someone else, you know, like if you're struggling with a business, then you've done the energy work, get your strategy sorted. And also like, maybe we should say it, Holly, that it doesn't need to be a linear thing. Like there's an element of doing the energy work first and then taking the action, of course, mm -hmm. but you don't have to do like all the energy work in the world. Oh, and no. And then take all the action in the world. It is, as you say, it's that spiral yeah. uh, staircase, right? It's one step, step, and one step, 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 step. So for me, I'm, I'm constantly like doing the inner work. I take the action. It works or doesn't work. Or yeah. I feel like I need to do something else, but I'm afraid of it. So I do some more inner work. Then I take the action. Like it's absolutely step, 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 step for me. 
Yeah. So that's really important to remember for everyone, I think, to keep taking those actions, right? Yeah. And learning from them and seeing how things feel. And, all, you know, often people will take an action in their business and they'll be like, yeah, yeah, this is definitely aligned. And then afterwards they'll be like, I, I really knew it wasn't aligned. Like yeah. I shouldn't have taken this client or I shouldn't have agreed to this. I had a gut feeling, but then I thought it was the thing to do. So, and that's something you have to work out for yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all a journey. And sometimes making these like mistakes, and I'm doing air quotes as I say that, that's just part of what you need to learn for the next step. Yeah, so, it shows you. Yeah. It shows you kind of in a, in a, in a brighter light <laughs> what you need to do, right? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the actual right choice for you and what's not. Yeah. Okay, I think 40 minutes is enough. <laughs> I think I think we've been clear. <laughs> so... Good luck. Go out there and take action. That's a lot of action. And let us know how it went for you. Yeah. And if you want to reach out with any comments or any questions or your own opinion, then both of us would absolutely love that. You can always email me at joanna at joannahennon.com or holly at hollywharton.com. Yeah, let's move through it together. Yay. So I hope you found this interesting and useful. Please drop me a line and let me know what you thought. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com and you can join me on Patreon. If you head over to patreon.com forward slash hollywharton, you can join me there and we can discuss what you thought of this week's episode, what you would like to hear me talking about in the future, and what things you would like Joanna and I to explore. Membership starts at just $1 a month and you'll get exclusive access to content I don't share anywhere else. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas if you celebrate that kind of thing. I know it's Christmas Eve when this is coming out. And I will be back next week, New Year's Eve, with another solo episode. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 283 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N dot com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.